Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review, another special Kickstarter review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out. Time of Legends Destinies. This is from Mythic Games and Lucky Duck Games. It's from Lucky Duck Games with collaboration from Mythic Games. This is for one, two, three players. It is uh, going to take about two and a half to uh, two hours to play, and it's for ages 14 plus, even though I will say negate that, ignore that 14 plus. And in Time of Legends Destinies, this is something absolutely, completely off the rails different. This is a game in which you are going to be playing a role-playing game for the most part, where each of you, uh, each of the characters are going to get their own unique character in the game. And every, all the characters are going to be dropped into this world, which is set in the Joan of Arc backdrop. It's like the 1400s, there's the Black Death, the Black Plague, the, the Black black Bad everything. There's wars and bad stuff going on, but you're just a regular person, you know, maybe you'll play in this particular scenario as the herbalist who just wants to go collect some herbs and complete your destiny but you're going to have two different you're going to have two destinies that you're trying to complete if you can complete one of those destinies you will win the game but everyone else is going to be trying to complete their destiny at the same time interacting with this world and changing the world around you as you progress through the game yeah i know i sound like i'm just nuts it will blow your mind let's open it up and i'll show you how it works uh, I do want to mention that I try to keep it relatively spoiler free, uh, but it is it is kind of hard to do that. But for the most part, it's going to be spoiler free. Also, before we get into that, if you want to help support the channel, make the audio, the video, everything better, please consider checking out the Patreon down below. But let's open up Time of Legends Destinies. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Time of Legends Destiny. So before we get started, I do want to mention a couple things. First and foremost, uh, this is the prototype copy I have right in front of me. So obviously these are going to be nicer when they get to you. These are going to be double-sided. You're going to have more cards. You're going to have more characters. You're going to have more map tiles because in the base game, you are going to get five scenarios. And what I have in front of me is what I use to play one scenario. So take that word for a grain of salt. So first and foremost, we're going to get our handy dandy rule booklet. It is uh, 12 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it is excellently done. I have no questions from this rule booklet whatsoever, and to be brutally honest with you, you're going to read this for about 10 minutes, then you're going to turn on the app, and the app is going to hold your hand and pretty much help you do just about everything else the app is so exquisitely done and i'm going to talk a lot about the app uh, but unfortunately i can't show you the app because i record on the ipad which is also how i use the app but um the rule booklet will help me kind of show you what the app is going to do but let's take a look at the components and we'll get into the gameplay so component wise uh first thing and arguably arguably the most interesting aspect of this game is going to be these three characters right here so in this particular scenario it's the mayor the deserter and the herbalist now um Everyone's going to take control of a different character, and you can play this completely solo, two players, three players, and on the back, it's going to have your backstory and your objectives, and everyone's going to have two objectives. Now, I'm going to try and keep this relatively spoiler-free, uh, but what you need to know is I've gotten a chance to play as all three. Well, I've played as all two, but then I watched my son play as the third one, which pretty much I played with him. Um... They all play, uh, they all have very different things that they're trying to do, and, and it's interesting seeing it from different perspectives and uh, trying to figure out what, how to best accomplish your goal. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So next you're going to get these map tiles right here, and I think they're going to get like 65 with the final game, and as you can see, um, they're, they're relatively generic, and they're relatively generic by design, because, so you can reuse them in different scenarios. And I do like how they have a fog of war effect, so these will be set out, and you're like, man, do I want to go... Uh, over here? Do I want to go over here? This place look, definitely looks more interesting and maybe I'm looking to talk to people. So I have a much higher chance of talking to people I would imagine here as opposed to there. So you get to see a little bit about what you're getting into, but you're not quite sure. Uh, and I'll talk, explain how that works a little bit later. Next, you're going to get some tokens. Uh, these are called, I believe, fate tokens, and these are going to be utilized to help you unlock spots on your player board, which is now is a great time to talk about the player board because it is a really simple player board. So how it works is you're going to start and you're going to have some of these little doodads scattered around. And the, uh, the app will tell you exactly how to do it. So this is your character right here. So you have your card up here, you might have a little extra money up here, you maybe got a fate token up here. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna go through the app, and I can show it to you on here, and you are going to go to different locations. And on your turn, you are going to move, and then generally you're going to interact with something. Uh, and you don't always have to move. So 
say that this is where we would start. And when I first start up the game, I have the option to either go to one of the tiles over here, the, the Fog of War tiles, or I have the actions to interact with things on my tile. So what's going to happen is when you, uh, when you click on the app, it's going to say, all right, you have gone to this area, it's bustling with business and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you see something spectacular over here on the tile. So maybe uh, over here is a lemonade stand. I don't know. Probably wouldn't be in this game. Uh, over here, there's an unburied uh, dog. You want to go and investigate the unburied dog. And over here, there's a big party. Everybody's partying. No, they'd actually probably have, you know, something that looked like that. Uh, a patch of snow, which looks like it's got claw marks in it. I don't know. And then you would interact with one of these things. And so you would just look at the app and you would just click on it. And literally, the app will look like this. And you just click and it will tell you exactly what happens. But what's going to happen is, let me see if I can find a picture of it. Yes, perfect. This is going to pop up. It will say uh, something is happening. And then you'll have some choices and you get to take tests. Now, which test you take is most likely going to depend on what you're trying to do and also how good you are at doing the things. So this is strength, this is uh, agility, this is intelligence. And you're always going to be able to roll these two dice. And you'll always have these two dice. These are your two dice that everyone is going to have. And I do want to mention that in the final version, these smaller dice, because they are smaller, it's hard to tell, but they're smaller, are going to be purple, very distinctive. So you're going to have these two dice and you're always going to get to roll them and they are between numbers one and four on them. Now, you're also going to have some of these dice, but these dice don't automatically come back to you. So you you could do your first skill check, you could roll all five of your dice, and you're probably going to nail it. Let's see, I got a three, six, seven, eight. I got the little burst symbol, which means that uh, that automatically counts as success. So if I rolled an eight, I would be able to have two successes on blue. I would only have one success on green, because as you can see, uh, there's only one button, one little dot in between zero and eight on green, and then I have two successes on red. And that's pretty much, that's how the success system works. And you're gonna have uh, cards that you'll get that will help modify this. So this one, you'll be able to re-roll your purple, uh, purple dice in every green test. But also, whenever you see one of these symbols on the bottom here, that means you automatically get to put one on that number. And some of them will be really good, like this. Woo, the occult folio. You get to put it on a four blue, which means, yeah, you're much more likely to do blues because now if you get a six, you're going to get one, two, three successes. But that's also how you're going to spend these uh, fate tokens right here. Because if you want to spend one, then you can put one over here in the crummy section. If you want to spend two, the kind of good section, the three, the four. And so you're going to be leveling up your character in that way, not only by gaining items, which will have different special abilities, some will deal with movement, some are one-time uses, uh, some are uh, persistent things that you have, but you're also going to be spending fate to upgrade your character as well. So, you are on your turn, you're going to be moving around the different tiles, doing activities, interacting with all sorts of different people, which I didn't even mention the miniatures, but yeah, there's going to be little miniatures that you're going to be interacting with, and sometimes they'll be on the board and you'll be able to go up there and... Um, that's pretty much it. You're going to try and achieve your destiny before someone else at the table is able to achieve their destiny. But eventually what's going to happen is you get close to achieving your destiny and you will get into your epic finale where you are trying to complete some sort of epic, really difficult thing. But the interesting aspect about this is you'll be doing that on your turns while someone else is still, you know, maybe halfway through or three-fourths of the way through still trying to claw and scrape to get to their destiny because just because you're at your destiny doesn't mean you're necessarily going to win, as you will see when you play this game. Um, some other cool aspects that I really want to mention here so I don't forget them is your coins here. So how do you spell coins? Well, you're going to be able to spend coins in different ways in the environment. First, just to do things like maybe get your fortune read or you can buy things. And they have a really cool uh, system where uh, there's a blacksmith and I ran into two different marks at markets where I could buy things in the introductory scenario. Uh, but they'll have, uh, it's, it's literally like a market. So they'll say, put out these four cards and whenever anyone goes to the market to get something, uh, they buy it and then it's gone, but then they can also sell things. So maybe they'll sell something back to the market. Uh, the other interesting thing is that you have a five card hand limit. And if you ever go over that, you have to discard a card, but much like in real life, you know, if you drop this ornamental key on this tile right here, it's not just going to disappear. It stays there. So someone else can come and pick it up, which I think is, I really do like that aspect of it. I think it uh, immerses you into the realism. Now, the last thing that I want to mention, which I have, I want to mention a lot in the pros and the cons is that the app, which unfortunately I can't show you because I'm a noob, uh, also has an excellent soundtrack on 
wanted. Uh, every single time you click on something, it's going to try and immerse you into the theme. Like maybe if it's the uh, the blacksmith, you'll hear the clinking of the armor. Or if you're at the inn, you'll hear, you know, uh, the background talk of people talking, maybe a little bit of music or something like that. If you're in the woods, you'll hear the wind howling, and maybe you'll hear a wolf howling in this particular scenario, because this scenario deals with wolves. Um, every single uh, thing you click on, for the most part, is going to be a little bit different, which is really stinking cool as well. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to get inside of Time of Legends Destiny. Alrighty, the Time of Legends Destinies from Lucky Duck Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. One to three players, aren't restricted player count, and I completely understand why it's capped at three, because I have not got a chance to play it at three players, but there will definitely be some downtime when you get to three players, because sometimes your turns can be kind of lengthy, you know? Uh, it's not just like you click one action and then you do one thing, because sometimes that action will chain into another action, will chain into another action, and there can be some downtime between turns. Now, that being said, I think that that's not going to be a big issue for pe most people, because unlike most games, you're going to be actively interested in what other people are doing on their turn, because you might want to go do that or you might want to go there and do something different or you might see something there that could help you contribute to your destiny card so you're actively going to be engaged in other people's stories as well as your story which is a really really fascinating thing uh continuing on with the con side i do want to mention that i did have some issues with the app in particular clicking some qr codes i'm not terribly worried about that because as i said this was an early build of the game i only had the one scenario to play with right there uh, but if I, I've never had any issues with Chronicles of Crime, so I figured they know how to do their QR. So this is something that, while I do want to mention it, it's not something I'm really worried about. Uh, also, I have not played the complete solo game uh, because apparently the solo game is still getting upgrades and facelifts as we talk. And I'm about to tell you in the pros, it's the best solo experience I've ever had in my life when it comes to board games. It's that freaking good and it's only going to get better but one thing that i do want to mention uh if, for instance is that uh in the scenario i died uh, actually my son died while we were playing and it just uh, the the app apparently didn't have the death uh the death thing implemented into it yet so it was just like oh you're dead and then it was just like okay just game over uh and i actually had to like hard reboot to get out of the app but that's the kind of stuff that obviously by the time it gets to you is not going to be an issue any other cons that I have with the game? The game is lengthy, you know? Even at uh, solo, you're looking at probably about uh, 80 to 90 minutes, and once you get it to two players, three players, you could be looking at about a four-hour game, three to four-hour game so when you're first learning it. And it really depends. You know what? Three, three to four is a little bit of a stretch. I'd say three to three and a half. But still, you know, uh, I think once you know what you're doing, you are going to hit in that two to two and a half hours at two and three players. But it is something that I do want to mention. This is a lengthy game. But... I feel like I have pros for every single con. With most lengthy games, they're really hard to get to the table. This one, I don't think is going to be hard to get to the table because of the lack of setup. But that's the pros. The pros are like overflowing into the cons. That's how excited I am about this game. Any other cons that I have with this game? Oh, the biggest con. I've only got a chance to play 20% um, of the game because there's going to be five different scenarios. And I've only played the first scenario. In actuality, I probably played like 17% of the game because of, uh, they're still working on it. It's still a work in progress, even though I will say uh, the first scenario was done. It was done. I, I explored all the tiles and I did as many of the things I could. I think there's only like a couple things that I didn't see. That's the last con that I have with this game. This one could be something that will turn some people off, but I still have a pro for it as well. Uh, and that is that once you've played through a story, I think, uh, like I've played through this story three times. Now, or, well, two and a half, really. I'll explain that more in the pros because my son played and I just helped him play the whole game. Um, <clears throat> you're going to know pretty much everything going on. You're going to have a very good idea of how to achieve your destiny. So the replayability of this game absolutely takes a hit after you've played each scenario, I'd say two or three times. But here's the thing. You are going to want to play the scenario at least twice because you're going to see a lot of stuff in your time. But then you're going to want to try and do it a different way or do things a little bit differently. Uh, but I do think that also, that's a Your Mileage May Vary kind of thing. Because if you're playing three players, you're going to see a lot more than you might see uh, when you're playing two players and one player. So I really is going to depend on your player count. I think you're going to get a very different experience between one players and three players. Which is a good thing, but it is something that you need to note. Any other cons that I have with this game? Nope. Nope, I'm done.
uh, because the only other comment I have in this game is that uh, the, this little player board that I got, sometimes like the tokens would fall off and there's no good way to see where your tokens should be. But they're going to fix that in the final version of the game because it's going to have like, um, it's not going to have the prototype components. So that's not even a con. Moving on to the pros. Time of the Legends Destinies is absolutely amazing, fantastic, outstanding. It's one of the best games I've ever played in my life and I cannot wait to get my hands on the final game. There we go. Full disclosure, it's spectacular. And... I've, I've never done this before, but that's how confident. I want to show you how confident I am in this game, because I do believe this game is going to win Game of the Year numerous times in 2020. I think it's going to be that good of a game. And I've only played one of the five scenarios. And, and before you go like, oh my gosh, he's going all crazy hyperbole on me now. No, I've done over a hundred Kickstarter videos. I've done games like Scythe. I've done Chronicles of Crime. I've done Good Cop, Bad Cop, games that I absolutely love and I still adore and I have in my collection now. And I have never given a Kickstarter game a Bowers Best Deal just because the game is not complete and I don't know what else is going to be coming in the game. But this one, I feel so confident in this game. I feel so confident with Lucky Duck's track record, with the QR codes, and what I've played with the game. I'm willing to slap a Bowers Best Deal on it because I'll put it just like this. If this were just the one scenario, people would be incredibly disappointed. Not because of the game or necessarily even the price, but because they want more. Like if this were Fantasy Flight, you would get maybe two two or three scenarios in the box and then you'd be paying out of your nose for the rest of your life for a scenario every other month. Uh, but that's not what you're getting here. You're going to be getting five scenarios. You're going to be getting tons of different map tiles. You're going to be getting tons of item cards. You're going to be getting three different people for each unique scenario. But there's so much more. I feel like I'm a telemarketer right now. Oh, Slap of Bowers best on it. That's how much I believe in this game. It's just that stinking good. Um, but there's so much more because you're going to be able to create your own scenarios and then you're going to be able to download people's created scenarios. My son was already making his own scenario with the components after we got done playing. And that's another. So oh, I got I got to, I got to slow down. So what did I like about the game? So first and foremost, I have never had a better solo gaming experience than this. Everything about this game immerses you into it, and that's all from the app. The sound design on the app, the user friendliness on the app are just top notch. That's one last con I do have of this game. Some people are going to be a little bit skeptical because it is app based. That's a huge con. I can't believe I forgot that. I was just too excited about talking about the game. Uh, but yeah, and you know, there is the potential that if, you know, 10 years from now, Android or, or iOS stops supporting whatever it is it's going to do, then you might kind of hosed hopefully that's not the case but that is something that you need to know continuing on with the pros though um everything about the app is well done uh, except for the issues that i had with the qr code just user friendly and it's gonna make them learn it's, it makes the game super easy to learn and super easy to teach and i want to tell you it says ages 14 plus on the box i played this with my six-year-old son because i got done playing it and i was like wow this is a choose your own adventure game that's what this is. This is a, you know, it's role playing, but it's choose your own adventure. Whatever you want to do, you can do. So I was like, hey, buddy, do you want to try this game? And I was like, it's a little bit scary. You know, there's some wolves and some bad stuff going on. It does deal with a little bit of death and stuff like that. But I was like, he can absolutely handle it. And he sat down here for an hour and a half to two hours making every single decision in the game. I literally was just navigating the app and reading to him because it does use some of the 1400s like words. And it's kind of complex to read for a six year old. Uh, and he made every choice in the game. And he didn't end up winning, but he had a blast. He wants to play it again, and he's super excited about this game. And as am I. Uh, I really like playing it both as a solo game, but also as a two-player game. Like I said, have not got the chance to play as a three-player game. I imagine I'd still love it, uh, even though it is going to reveal a lot more secrets, I think, when you're playing three players. But it's just, oh, oh. It's just so much fun exploring, and the map just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And, and it's, there's so many different turns where it's like, oh my gosh! Like, there were some revelations where I was like, what's going on? And uh, I like how the fact, it really does feel like you can play the game how you want to play the game. You know, so for instance, I was at this guy's house. And uh, for my particular character, I... <laughs> I, I, I'm going to try and keep this very unspoilery, but it, but it just kind of gives you an example of how cool this game is. So I was playing as a character, and there was a huge, huge problem. There's just a massive problem. Like, it actually starts up and it tells you about this huge problem. But I was like, not my problem. Not my problem. I don't care about any of that. I have my own specific destiny. So in the backdrop, there's like this terrible thing going on. And I'm just like, nope. I'm just going to focus on my destiny. And so I'm at this guy's house and I have choices. Do I want to, do I want to just knock out? 
the guard in the front of the door? Do I want to sneak around the house? Do I want to try and trick him into letting me into the house? And depending on how I do it, it's going to have different repercussions. And then, but there's the, the cool part about that turn is I get into the house, but what's inside the house? There's more stuff inside the house that I have to deal with. And I have to deal with that in different ways as well. And I'm choosing my own freaking adventure in a board game and it works so well. And that's what you need to know. I have never been more confident about a Kickstarter than this game. It is just Oh, oh, I can't wait. I just, I just, I just, I want, I want it to make $25 billion so this comes with a giant box and it has nothing but scenarios so I can have this game forever and I can just play through every single scenario and then I can forget about the scenarios and then I can play through them again because that's how much I like this game and I think you will like it as well. If you're in the market for a couple game, like if you play with your significant other or you play with just one buddy, get this, get this, get this, get this right now and I'd say guess the same thing if you routinely hit three players. If you are a solo gamer, I don't know why you were still watching this video, click on that Kickstarter link and back it because this is the best solo experience I've ever had in my life. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I know I've been talking about a lot, but normally when you get these uh, one and a half to three hour games out, they're harder to hit the table because you have to explain the rules and maybe you have to go back to the rules, you forget something about the rules, not with this. It's like, Click on the app, click on the scenario, and it's like, okay, set out these tiles, this is what you get, this is your card, and you're just like, oh, well, I'm ready to go, and now I'm playing the game within five minutes, and it's, and it doesn't matter if you're playing two players or three players or solo, you can do that so easily, uh, oh, the miniatures, there's miniatures too, cool, whatever, I don't really need them, but they do add to the theme of the game, so that's good, you know, they're not huge or anything like that, but, you know, do you really need a huge blacksmith? It's like, no, there's just a guy, there's a blacksmith token here, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a priest token here. Oh, there's a demon over here. Man, man. Time of Legends Destiny. Lucky Deck Games. This is one of the best games I've ever played, and I've only played 17% of it. Which I can't believe I'm actually saying, because it, it makes me feel a little bit dirty saying like that, but that's uh, that's how excited I am, I am for this game. Um, I'll be brutally honest with you right now, there's going to be a lot of games that come out over the next 12 to uh, 12 months. I don't know when this is supposed to be released. I don't think I'm going to be nearly as excited about any of them as I'm excited to get my hands on Time of Legends Destinies. That's how amazing this game is. I'm done talking about it! I'm done! Because here's the thing, I played through the, the main scenario, so now I can't play it anymore until it comes out, and I'm sad! But the great thing is, I can spread this to my friends, because I can let my friends borrow it, and they can play it, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, you know so much about board games, but like, yeah, I do. They're like, yeah, Forrest recommended the super awesome game to me, I'm like, yeah, well. Alright, <laughs> that was so lame. Uh, but there you go, that's Time of Legends Destiny from Lucky Duck Games. Check it out on Kickstarter, 49 bucks! 49 bucks, and I'm not sure if that counts shipping, whatever. Either way, get it. Just get it that good if you're enjoying what i'm doing please feel to click on that subscribe button down below if you want to support the channel click on the little amazon associates link down below buy anything on amazon same amazing great prices throws a couple spending money away pennies my way and in the comments below let me know when was the last time that you knew a game was a sure thing for you where you were just like this game i'm gonna like it i'm gonna love it no matter what video game board game uh whatever kind of game you want to go with for me personally um what did we do, do, do aside from you know so, yeah, aside from this one, because I did, and if you want to see more just absolutely stupid excitement from me about this game, uh, I got a chance to interview them at Gen Con about this game, and I was stupidly excited about that game back then, and now that I've played it, I can say the hype, the hype is real. Uh, but I'm probably going to go with video games, and I'm going to go with Apex Legends, uh, which was, and I thought it fixed a lot of problems about the, uh, the Battle Royale genre and i still love that game so yeah for me personally it was apex legends board game wise obviously this one but later on the comments below when's the last time you knew a game was going to be a sure thing for you and as always thanks for your time youtube